Welcome to our living room on this beautiful August day. So I'm I'm going to tell a story that I'm pretty sure I haven't told on these on these videos and it takes it's a story from a long time ago. And it's a story about my my father and the and the way that he that he showed his love. My father was raised um in in quite a a strict German home, traditional German home, and and there wasn't um, expression of feelings, especially the the expression of love. So, um, my my father just, for whatever reason, just felt awkward saying, "I love you," but he showed it, and once I realized that he was showing it to me rather than telling it to me, it just opened up a whole world for me. So this is a, st a story about how my dad was showing me. So Barry and I got married in 1968, and um, we had a little apartment in Nashville, Tennessee. You know, one of those apartments where there's like 130 other units, they're all the same. Cheap, cheap. I'd say it's just totally cheap. And the walls were paper thin. Paper thin. You could hear everyone on either side and down <laughs> below. And um, anyway, my parents came to visit our little tiny apartment, and they stayed for I think it was three days. I was so excited to have them, to have them come and see a home that that we had created together, and. My dad walked in with his toolbox. I'm like, Dad, you don't need your toolbox. Oh, you never know. And he also had some pieces of wood with him. I didn't know what in the world was going on. But we had our visit, and we went places in, in Nashville. And Barry and I, um, uh, one of those days, I, I had to work as a public health nurse. And Barry was in medical school. And... And we came back, and I was putting some things away in the closet, and I noticed a shelf, a shelf on top of a shelf. Yeah, there was a, the shelf that came with the apartment, and then there was another shelf that he had put on. I'm like, what is this? And he's like, you needed another shelf. I'm like, I did not need another shelf. And this isn't even our apartment. I kind of got huffy, like I... Like, I want you to just accept, accept it the way it is. Anyway, that was that house. Two years later, we moved to L.A., where Barry was finishing his medical school, and I was in graduate school. My parents came for another visit. My dad brought his toolbox. How, how he brought it on the plane, I don't know. But, and he also brought some wood. So this time I was suspicious. And I said, Dad, I don't, I don't need any shelves, and you just don't have to do that. But, you know, same thing. I went off to work. Barry went off to medical school. We came back. There was a shelf on top of a shelf that was in this apartment. And so it went. Whenever we moved, we, we moved to Portland. A shelf was built. And then we moved to a home where we lived for 13 years, in, in Aptos, California, the home that was destroyed by the earthquake, near where we live now. And it became the tradition. Barry and I would, do, would lead our Hawaii retreat, and my parents would come and watch our two daughters. And when we came back, there would be shelves. And remember, this 13 years in a small little house. And we'd come in, my dad would get his newspaper, put the, you know, pretend he was reading the newspaper and we'd go around and find all the shelves. And so there were shelves on top of shelves and then other shelves on top of shelves. And eventually the shelves were just really, really small because there's just so many shelves you can put on top of shelves. But they were there after every, every time we were away. And I began to realize, yeah, my dad couldn't say I love you, but he was showing it in the way that, that he knew how. He loved carpentry, loved it. 
and every shelf represented, I love you. Unfortunately, that home was completely destroyed and everything had to be, be bulldozed. And then we moved into the house where we're at now. My father was getting older and but there's still two sets of shelves in this in this new house that my that my dad built and it's a constant reminder of of his love hmm. and what um what i want to give you the inspiration by telling this story is sometimes people that we love and care about they don't love us exactly the way that we want i mean i would have liked my father to listen to my feelings and hold my hand and tell me that he loves me so deeply. That never happened. But these shelves came through with so much love and it's a it's just a lasting legacy of of who he is. And so think about different people in, in your life and how they express their love and then and then receive it in to your heart as a beautiful gift. Mm, that's beautiful, yeah. <laughs> Would you like me to build you a shelf? Oh, you've built shelves, I yeah. have built shelves. Not as many as my dad. But, but, um, but I like looking into your eyes and telling you I love you. Yes, you do. <laughs> and listening to my feelings. And listening to your yeah, feelings. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, I mean, you know, there's um, different love languages, right? And we need, we do need to pay attention because, you know, what our love language is may not be what our friend or partner's is. And, you know, we need to learn, you know, whether it's an act of service, building a shelf, or words of appreciation, or whatever it is, right? So, so you're going to sing for us, Mary. Yeah, I'm sing this song. So, um, uh, this is, um, I rediscovered um, a song, when, it's my, one of my favorite songs by one of our friends, Dan Rieger in Portland, Dan and Rachmana, who we love so much, and if you're listening, Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is my favorite of your songs. And, um, and then I, while I was singing it, um, there's a poem, actually, that, that, I, that kind of follows the same kind of feeling. Or Anyway, I just inserted it with the same melody, so... So there'll be Dan's song, and then there, there'll be a little poem, not a poem, it's actually a prayer afterwards. So. Okay, put the microphone. <laughs> <clears throat> I want to feel all the love I am I want to know the truth that lives within I want to be the peace that never ends today I am all that I am beneath these tall green trees we stand asking blessings from the land Thanks we give to Thee above For Thy health and strength and love 
I want to feel all the love I am. I want to know the truth that lives within. I want to be the peace that never ends. Today I am that I am. Today I am that I am. Hmm. So close your eyes a moment, just feel that. I want to feel all the love I am. I also want to feel and receive all the love that showed shown to us by our friends, our parents, our children, our beloveds, even though it's not exactly the way we would like it, just the way they show it, and to to read that love into it, to feel it and receive it. All right, take a deep breath, open your eyes, and thank you for your love, which we're receiving right this moment, right through this camera. <laughs> ah, you know, I, as, as Barry was, was singing, I, I remembered um, something so special that happened with my dad um, a month before he before he passed at age 89. He was very, very vulnerable. Um, just his feelings were coming out. And mm -hmm. I had a, a time with him, and, and he looked at me with tears in his eyes, which was very unusual for my dad to have tears in his eyes. And he said, it was, I don't know why, but it was so hard for me to say the words, I love you. I'm going to say them now. And he did. And I, I, t I told him that I always felt his love. Always. And we had a beautiful, a beautiful hug. It's beautiful. So. <laughs> mm, all right. <laughs> <laughs>